Oh wow, I, I have to go. I have to go book this show. I have to find the Techno Blue Ranger. God knows where he is. Oh man, so much. This isn't my red wine. This is cola champagne. Wait a second. That means that only means one thing. Oh, it's not Green Lake. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back, for I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. All my other wrestling t-shirts are in the wash right now. So this was the cleanest one I found on the floor. And typically, it's a red wine and pizza Friday, but it's the day. It's the day before one of my favorite days of the entire year. I think one of five times I break down, go to the Bravo Market, get some cola champagne instead of red wine. But this is still a red wine and pizza. Friday Smackdown. So yes, let's talk about some Smackdown. There are no more shout outs to give. Everyone else has been shouted out already, which is kind of good because I have stuff to do tonight. So this is going to be probably a pretty quick video. Um, so we start off, Roman Reigns comes out. Um, he demands, Jey Uso is already in the ring. It's like, Jay, you know what you have to do. Oh, wait a second. We don't know what Jay has to do. Does Jay have to surrender his wife Naomi to him? Hmm, interesting. But yep, so so we'll see. Um, in order for Jay to be back in the good graces of, of of the tribal chief, we'll see what has to happen later in the show. First match of the night, though, we have Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, this was that <sighs> Kevin Owens just seems above this for some reason. Good match. Nothing spectacular. Uh, Dolph tries a single leg. <laughs> Kevin Owens just is like laughing. He's like, what? Whatever. Puts him into a headlock. For Kevin Owens is the true master of that headlock. Besides Delirious and El Generico. Um. Yeah. Ko and he's also Kevin Owens is also in pants. That's weird. Normally he's in like socks, baggy shorts, shirt. I don't know. Maybe a new look for Kevin Owens. We'll see as the future goes around. Uh, Kevin Owens is a big shoulder tackle. Eventually Dolph Ziggler heals up. He takes him in the headlock or kind of rakes his eyes across that rope. It's always good to see. I do miss that classic heel tactic. Uh, KO jumps to the outside, then he gets jumped by Robert Roode, and then Robert, then the ref sees Robert Roode trying to put Kevin Owens back in the ring. The ref says, "No, you, you've had enough. You are out of here." So Roode gets tossed, and you know, up oh, Dolph's losing. Um, Dolph then next shot we see him come back. He's raking the eyes, contorting the face of one Kevin Owens. Uh, Kevin Owens, he comes back with his chops. You start to see a little fist of cuffs there. Some chops, forearms, uh, kicks. He makes his comeback a little bit. Uh, then Kevin Owens, again, whenever I see the inverted atomic drop, I'm always happy. But then he like went off he went off the ropes and he hit the bottom rope, like Ray Mysterio. I'm like, huh? That was a weird thing. Um, he catches Dolph Ziggler in like a spinning air raid crash. That was good. I don't know how Dolph ever came back out of that. Dolph countered the famous serve as soon as Kevin Owens puts his head down. But Kevin Owens was smart enough to kick Dolph in the gut. Eventually hit him with a stunner. Ugh. And Kevin Owens wins. Kevin Owens is going to be a representative for SmackDown uh, for Survivor Series. I still don't know when Survivor Series is. I don't change my calendar until tomorrow. Today's only the thirtieth, because tomorrow, or in a few, in in an hour and a few minutes, it's one of my favorite days, Halloween. But yeah, um, this match was nothing spectacular. Dolph wasn't gonna win. I don't. I mean, Dolph, Dolph, hey, hey, he can sell great. He can sell work great. Yeah, he should still keep his job, but. I don't know. To be in a high-profile match like this, I guess I don't understand. Not a bad match. Eh. A ham sandwich of a match. But 
Then we have Natalia, Bianca Belair, and Billy Kay backstage. Billy Kay needs to talk more in backstage segments. And then from there, they said, yeah, we're going to have a match. Then there was a Lars Sullivan interview. You think I'm a freak? I'll show you a freak. Then, let's see, before the match, Bianca Belair goes to the ring. They cut backstage. Uh, Aaliyah, Mysterio, and Murphy are together. Murphy says, I will apologize to your father and your brother. I was a bad, bad man. I'm like, hmm, this could be interesting. We shall see. Uh, back in the ring, Bianca Belair is still strutting around. Natalia makes her interest, and then Billy Kay, Billy Kay, who still looks absolutely amazing. The only thing Billy Kay is missing is that shimmery cape. She needs to bring that back from NXT. I think when she first came on to uh, Raw, jeez. Years ago, as Jobber to Nia Jax, she looked absolutely amazing. I was smitten by her. Now she's in threesomes with Sean Spears and Peyton Royce. Oh, I didn't say that. I was kind of thinking that. Very bad thoughts. Hey, Billy Kay. I'm single, too. Oh, marry me. It's a U.S. citizenship, baby. Oh, wait. I digress. Um... So, again, this match, Bianca Belair versus Billy Kay versus Natalia. See, the first woman's going to be, and, and I'm thinking, like, wait a second. There's not that many women on the SmackDown roster. You're already eliminating two of them, unless you're going to have the loser, the losers of all the matches compete in, like, a fatal four-way to see who gets the last spot. They could do that. It's not... They've done it in the past, so I believe they could. How good is that going to be? They're, so they're definitely going to have, well, the winner of this match, Carmella's going to be there. Bailey and Sasha will be there. That leaves two more spaces. Um, um, oh, wow. Wait a second. Who's going to fill two more spaces? Tamina? I don't know. We'll see what happens next week. They have to... Or they just might say, rest of the women. Wait, that is the rest of the women. Huh. Ah. I have no clue. We shall see what happens. But in this match, though, um, Natalia... Bianca Belair has Billy Kay. Billy Kay, Billy Kay is a smart, cowardly heel. And she's actually really good in this fashion. Um, she gets caught by Bianca. Natalia goes to slap Billy Kay. But no, she missed Billy Kay. She ducked. Instead, she's Natalia, the, the Kmart mom, slaps Bianca Belair. Again, Billy Kay's smart. Uh, she goes out, uh, Billy Kay goes out to the ring for a little bit. Again, playing the cowardly heel role. She'll take advantage when it's the opportune time. Not before, not after. She's not going to get beat up. We'll see about that. But um, uh, Billy Kay in the cowardly heel. She did the assisted. She got caught in a uh, belly to back suplex. Turn, she turned that into an assisted head scissors. Again, good stuff. Very opportunistic. Uh, Bianca does a flippy moonsault thing. Natalia does a back stomp and her basement drop kick move. And there was a double submission by both Natalia that had Bianca Belair in the sharpshooter. And then Billy Kay puts like the rear chin lock on Bianca Belair. And you're thinking like, oh, Bianca Belair is going to tap. And Billy Kay and Natty will get there? Oh, that's weird. What could they do with Billy Kay? Or have Natalia and Billy Kay. But no, that didn't matter. Uh, Billy uh, Natalia was upset with Billy Kay because she's like, "Hey, you're gonna steal my submission!" Terrible, terrible heel tactic. Though, again, always appreciate old school heel tactics. The cowardly heel is one of the best heels around. Um, then that kick by Billy Kay is really good. 
Then she starts doing pin attempts. She pins Billy Kay, tries to pin Natalia. Then she goes back to try and pin Billy Kay, tries back to p- pin Natalia. Um, unfortunately, then Billy Kay gets stuck in the sharpshooter. Bianca actually forces Natalia out of the ring. And Billy K eats a K K O D, and that was it. So unfortunately, Billy K did the job. That was good. That was entertaining. It was a cheeseburger match. I'll tell you what this this SmackDown went by fairly quickly, which I'm kind of shocked at. Then we had a Carmella promo. I don't know what Carmella did to herself, but she looks like a 50-year-old Florida mom. Like her, her face has that leathery 50-year-old Florida blonde look. And that's not necessarily a good look. The Florida sun kills. Like it absolutely decimates 40, like any woman over the age of 30 with blonde hair. If you have, if you are age thirty and have blonde hair, do not come to Florida. The Florida sun will wreck you. You will be twenty years old, and I guarantee you, in the course of one summer, all of a sudden you will turn fifty. It's the Florida sun zonks you. Fortunately for me, I don't have that problem. Well, I have no hair, but yeah, my normal hair is great. No, it's not gray. It's brown. Stark brown when I used to have hair. But yeah. So it doesn't bother me as much and I'm already getting I'll I'll tell you what, I was kind of freaked out. And I, just a very quick side note about age. Tracy Smothers was only fifty eight years old. And that means he was only fourteen years older than me. Ugh. I'll tell you what, it's weird getting old. Instead of um when I got my alumni magazine from from the colleges that I that, that I kind of slept at, um, I see people and I'm like, wait a second, why are these people in the obituary section? Like they're they're my a growing number of them are getting to be my age. That's not good. Um, but then we had the next Aaliyah. And Murphy part, uh, they go to the ring. They, they call out Ray and Dominic. Instead, Seth shows up. Oh, God. Oh, Seth. Just, just go be with Becky. Like She has a baby bump now. She, she needs belly rubs and foot massages. Just get out of here. I was never a big Seth Rollins fan. That was a fat time. Oh, it's not even red wine, but I need something. Oh, that's, that makes me feel a little bit... Ooh, that is good. Again, only twice a year do I get champagne call. This is one of them. Yeah, so then... Seth shows up. Dominic comes out. Uh, Murphy and Dominic brawl a little bit with Seth. Um, Ray gets involved. Um, Aaliyah stops her father. And Aaliyah, like the very... Very disrespectful daughter says, No, I'm not coming with you, Daddy. I'm my own woman now. Oh. Oh, my. So, yeah. She used the L word. She said, You're a loser. Oh, wow. That's never good. And then she left with Murphy. Murphy, good for you. Um, I don't know if this is a step up from Alexa Bliss, but still it's pretty good marrying into Luchador royalty. However, I don't know if you want to go after the daughter of... Well, yeah, that's Ray Mysterio. He's tiny. If it, was, if it was Eddie Guerrero's daughter, that's another thing. You have the whole Guerrero clan. But, yeah, Mysterio, okay, whatever. Then the next match, we had the Street Profits taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro again. Uh, Shin- Shinsuke came out he was the only wrestler that was dressed kind of in Halloween gear. Yeah, Natalie Natalie just looks like something from a horror movie anyway. But yeah, Shinsuke Nakamura, I just realized. He came out to look in like Thriller gear. That was pretty cool to see. Um, Cesaro starts off 
great European uppercut. He's so good. He's so underrated. It's not even funny. Um, I don't know why they haven't made him a singles champ. I forget if he held the Intercontinental belt ever. Did he ever hold the U.S. belt? He never. He never hold, held the big belt. But yeah, WWE's like that sometimes. Um, Angelo Dawkins, I finally got his name right. Does some amazing rope running a couple times back and forth. I'd be like winded by then. That was good to see. Uh, Montez Ford warriors is up. As, as he does, he grabs the ring ropes. Ah. Yeah, I mean, I remember the warrior did the warrior did that better for some reason. That's okay. Do I do need this? And that's charging. So that's good. Um, so we come back. Oh yeah, he wars it up and gets flapjack over the barricade. That was good to see. Uh, we back in the ring. Cesaro has an arm bar on Ford, kind of wearing him down. This sets up the bigger guy Dawkins. There's, there's not much bigger, so I'll give WWE a little wiggle in there as far as their very systematic tag team matches. So, but be warned, WWE. Um. So Dawkins comes in as a hot tag. He cleans house. Shinsuke Nakamura. He he goes he goes back on the offensive. Some kick, vicious, strong solid kicks and knees to Dawkins. Cesaro, a great gut wrench, power bomb. So amazing looking. Cesaro really is pound for pound one of the strongest, best wrestlers they have. I don't know why they don't use utilize him anymore. Cesaro, however, does eat a pop up power bomb. Then Shinsuke Nakamura comes in. He gets superplexed by Dawkins. I'll tell you what, I might knock on, on Montez Ford, but that frog splash he does, like he actually jumps up and he gets some ups off that rope because he flies. One day he's going to hurt himself. But yeah, uh, the Street Profits get the win. Good cheeseburger match. Sami Zayn cuts a promo, talks about every country in the world that has had civil unrest, warlords, or just flat out brutal civil wars, and or having child soldiers. Whoa, I miss El Generico. But yeah, so that'll be fun because um, Sami Zayn represents all those countries, whereas Bobby Lashley just represents the good old USA. USA, USA, USA. Yeah. So we'll see what happens again at Survivor Series. Um, Sasha comes out, cuts a promo. Bailey's there. They're going to have a rematch. Yeah, I'm not even sure. The only thing I like to stare at is Sasha when she wears her jumpsuit because then she looks cute. Um, Bailey is very quickly becoming. Kmart mom, though. Evil Romulan villain Kmart mom. Then we had our main event. It was Daniel Bryan versus Jey Uso for the next spot. This makes sense. Uh, SmackDown, they can kind of prolong this a little bit. And they have probably just a, about the right amount of men for these matches. So good stuff. Uh, Daniel Bryan, whenever I see him wrestle, is always a joy. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Jey Uso. Jey. Chase pissed off. He's emotional. He's fighting. He just wants... He just looks like he's frustrated and wants to punch someone in the face. I like it when people get like that. You know what? My cousin just belittled me in front of a worldwide audience. You're in front of me. You're getting punched in the face. That's good to see. So he beats up Daniel Bryan for a little bit. Daniel Bryan counters with a great European uppercut of his own, by the way. Followed up by knees. Uh, Jey Uso does a Simone draw. Uh, we come back from the break. Daniel Bryan's delivering yes kicks. Yes. 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 All, all over the ring, too. That was amazing to see. Roman Reigns shows up, and he's like, hmm. Just stands there, watches. Very calmly, too. Jey Uso then goes to the t top rope, but no, Daniel Bryan counters that. Uh, Daniel Bryan was trying to do a belly-to-back superplex, 
Jay Uso's counters that to a float over. Daniel Bryan then eats a super kick. He has that. Jay has that amazing Uso splash um, after Jay got out of a label lock. Jay Uso wins. Bravo, WWE, for doing something different, I guess, even though you've always buried Daniel Bryan. So, but yeah, I'm sure Daniel Bryan was like, oh, I got to wrestle a match. I'm happy. I got to wrestle, wrestle. Then Jey Uso comes in the ring and, and Roman says, yeah, prove you're worthy. So Jay goes right over to Roman and says, I love you, man. Now I get it. And beats the snot of Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan gets beat up. They go to the outside. He gets slammed into the ring apron. Slammed into the steps. Uh, you get Daniel Bryan gets set up on the table for a big splash. Oh, but you know what? The table won. The reason why I say the table won, Jey Uso did not get enough distance when he launched himself off the top rope to put Daniel Bryan through the announce table. Something very, very painful spot. A little bit, a lot above the knee, a little bit below the navel, caught the corner of the table. And you could see right away, Jay Uso's face went, oh, yeah, the table always wins. Tables and ladders, I don't know what it is. They they have a pretty good track record, though, of not selling for some reason. But, yeah, so Jey Uso realized what had to be done. He sucked it up. He was probably going to say, oh, my God, my nuts hurt. But, yeah, he splashed Daniel Bryan through the table. He gets back in the ring, ring with his tribal chief. The tribal chief, Roman Reigns, acknowledges that he did right. Right now, all is good. I want to see where Naomi fits into this. Because she's married to... I, I honestly forget who she's married to, but she's married to one of them. So, yeah. And uh, this match, I'll tell you what. It's Daniel Bryan can't put on a bad match. It was surprising to say, see Jey Uso win. I do like the emotion he showed during the match. You know what? Because this has been building up. And Roman Reigns has been changed ever since he faced Bray Wyatt. Very subtly. But, yes. Roman Reign has been changed. It whole, continues that whole fiend thread. I like the. Is that called continuity? Oh my! But again, I like this. That was good. It can, it has, has continuity. It's a surf and turf match. And that was SmackDown. Overall, a solid cheeseburger show. And that's it for the week. Um, only thing happening tomorrow, sometime tomorrow morning, I'll be posting. I don't know when it's going to go up. I will be posting the Havoc of Halloween Daytona Beach Bone Fight League special. Along with a very, very happy birthday wish. Happy birthday. Woohoo! Woo! She's going to be high styling. Woo! Profiling. Woo! Partying up all night. Woo! Limousine riding. Woo! Twisted Pixie. Happy birthday, Twisted Pixie. And you'll hear more from the, from probably the various characters of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League, or at least three of them, I think. Maybe. Um, again, happy birthday! And this special shout out goes to a very goes goes out to a very special lady. Happy birthday! Um, and with that, that's it. So I'll see everyone later. Um, have a safe, happy Halloween. 